Welcome to The Breakdown, where we break down all the messed up movies. Now, this isn't an explicit movie, but it's quite dramatic. Marta, a German movie released in 1974. Marta is a 31-year-old woman who has never been in a relationship, but catches the eye of one rich yet abusive figure that you see here. Unfortunately, Marta begins to lose her mind as her new husband gets more abusive and violent. So it's hard for me to do this, but I should let you know. Just a few days ago, my grandfather passed away. My grandfather was like my actual father. Everything I have is because of him. This building I'm recording in is his photography studio, his legacy that he entrusted to me for my channel. I got a lot to live up to, but also I'm not all there right now. It helps me to stay busy, but if I need time, I'll let you know. I'm doing fine. Unfortunately, Marta can't say the same. This movie is loosely based on a story written by Cornell Woolrich called For the Rest of Her Life. This movie is on YouTube for free, but if you're waiting for something a little more disturbing, I'll see you tomorrow. But you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts? Stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue the Gohan. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Only Romans wake up in the morning. This is Marta on vacation with her father staying in a hotel. And this sucker right here, that's not her father. Some weirdo who thinks he can just come in some lady's room and expect sex at the door. Marta's annoying papa is waiting for her. My whole life I've been waiting on you and your mother, he says. I just met you and I already want you to stop whining. See the hotel reception is here? He tells her that he sent that man to her room because she supposedly winked at him. Even still, that sucker thought he could just get some like that. Not to mention he's following them. He played one game of Assassin's Creed and thinks he's got it all down pat. While walking, the father has a heart attack on the stairs. The most random of death ever. His last words were, let go of me. Yeah, it was just his time. If there was any time, it was that. While she's mourning though, someone steals her purse, losing your belongings in a foreign country, atop of losing your father. Marta makes her way to the German embassy, and it's love at first sight. If there is any love at first sight, it is that, whatever the hell that was. She calls her mother to tell her what happened, shouting basically. She hangs up on her when she starts crying. She's really all over the place. And that is the first cigarette she's ever smoking before. Sure it is, come on. Uh, who are they, Cinderella's jealous stepsisters? That's Marta's mother and the sight of her husband's body makes her so distraught that she blames her daughter for what happened to her husband. We are literally 15 minutes in and I already feel the painful existence that Marta has. Everybody treats her like a burden and everything is her fault. Marta tells an admirer of her that she can't accept his marriage proposal. Literally seconds later, he asks her friend for marriage instead. And are you sure you want to stay with your mom? I know she's grieving, but damn, I get a headache being around her. You see mama laughing? This is what happens when you tell everyone you rejected the rich guy. Even though she's insulted constantly, she's always smiling again. I find that admirable, but it's just covering wounds, not healing them. Later at a sad dinner party, Marta sees her knight in shining armor again. I will admit he does have a presence. She leaves when everyone laughs at her, and the first meeting between the two happens. He sure knows how to lay it on thick. That is until he literally tells her she's not attractive or charming, too skinny, and that she's smelly. This is the most blunt nigging I've ever seen. Did you hear that scream? That was her mother who took too many sedatives. Imagine taking too much medicine and screaming like that. She basically tried offing herself and already people blame Marta for it. What did you do to your mother is what they say. Sometime later she goes to the fair with Mr. Solomon. That's his name. I'd be scared to ride roller coasters too but this ain't so bad. Just two people at a time is weird though for one roller coaster? It's here after vomiting up mom's spaghetti that he asks her for her hand in marriage. She's been waiting to hear those words from someone for a long time. Well just someone that's not that guy. For some reason, Marta's mother doesn't want her to marry him. It seems spiteful rather than foreshadowing that Mr. Solomon is a bad choice. It just seems like she's jealous or she's hateful. 
She swallows various pills to off herself because of it. Mr. Solomon thinks that they should let her mother pass away, and then he tries to make a move on her even though her mother is dying right there. He tells her, don't resist me when I try to make a move on you. He calls and arranges for Mata's mother to be committed to psychiatric care. The two have a quiet wedding and are going to Italy for their honeymoon. She's so happy that she could cry but he doesn't look happy at all. Already he gets a little controlling, making her watch what she eats and not allowing her to put on sunscreen. Unfortunately, she falls asleep and gets sunburned. Her pain becomes his pleasure and he forces himself on her despite her being in serious pain. They rent a new house on the way back to Germany. Looks like they live next to the Adams family. Now she was a librarian and her husband quits her job for her. She's so embarrassed walking into work that she starts crying and lies about why she's there when she finds out that she quit. And plus, everyone looks at her like she's an idiot or something. I hate it. Anyway, once her husband is back, she surprises him with a new hairdo, which I think looks great. He just laughs at her like she's wearing a clown mask, calling her too old for that hairstyle. Also, he gets more violet in bed. Hey, it, it kind of looks like someone is staring at them back there. Kind of creepy, isn't it? He also screams like an idiot in response to the kind of music she listens to. Overall, she's married to a big baby that is making her feel terrible about everything she does. He also starts getting her into engineering engineering so she can understand his work. She talks to her friend Marianne about her rough, fearful marriage. She struggles mentioning how violent he can be even though he doesn't really beat her like punch her. One day, the new librarian that Marta trained talks to her in public. His name is Mr. Kaiser. He seems a little interested in her, but she doesn't want to be reminded of her husband butting into her life, so she runs away. Pretty soon, she gets a little offensive. She tells him she doesn't like his music. She also tells him she didn't read his engineering book. At least he doesn't hit her. He just runs away like a little boy. I'd rather see him run away. However, that just makes her feel guilty and she starts reading the book to make him happy. The yearning to be accepted is so sad. She stays up for days waiting on him to come back. Her husband has some random post worker come disable her telephone since she's been calling so much. Mr. Kaiser seems to be who I would be if I were in this movie. Her husband, Mr. Solomon, is thinking something is going on between those two. She's reciting that entire darn engineering book back to him. It's impressive, actually but all for the wrong reasons. Maybe she can get hired at his job now. But still, the sucker is too rough on her. He also tells her she can't leave the house anymore because he's scared she'll cheat on him. When she asks him if they could have a child together, he forbids it because he thinks that their child will be mentally challenged because of her genes. Soon, a cat comes to adopt everyone. Get your hands off Blackie like that, you dirty ape. I love black cats. That's what I want, a black cat. Unfortunately, that ugly ape kills the cat somehow. I am also gonna miss that cat, even though it was on screen for like 10 seconds. And he gets rough on her again. She talks to Mr. Kaiser about her abusive husband, but once he says that her husband is a sadist, she makes a big scene and insults him out of the bar. Oh, and she's not supposed to be out of the house. And once she comes home, she screams in terror, noticing she's been found out. She figures that he is going to kill her and tries to escape. She fell into a delusional spell and runs out of the house. She hasn't mastered the art of running in heels, but she runs to Mr. Kaiser's house screaming that he is going to kill her. He offers to take her on the drive, but she is so freaked out. Honestly, she doesn't seem to be in danger at all, but she's so paranoid that she imagines that they are being chased I mean, I hate tailgaters too, but you gotta relax, lady. She grabs the wheel because she is so scared, unfortunately causing a wreck that has the car rolling into a field below. Mr. Solomon wasn't following her at all. She later wakes up in a hospital, where she finds out that Mr. Kaiser died in the wreck, and she will be paralyzed for life. She says that she'll manage but the doctor tells her that her husband is not the kind of person to leave her behind. She screams out for her mother, asking why is she doing this to her? 
I knew you hated that woman. It's good to be honest. It's okay to hate your parents and be loud about it. Still, she's paralyzed and has to look forward to living with him, her loving husband, for the rest of her life. The doctors tell her to make a complete recovery and she blankly watches while she is carried away to whatever the future awaits. What a sad existence Marta leads. Now, that's the end of the movie. Let's talk more about the most distressing moments and just some other ideas that came to mind in Marta. This is a movie I thought I'd see a lot more of. I'm surprisingly seeing plenty of good endings now, but this film had a sad one. Nothing good happens. Overall, I think it shows how important self-esteem is. Reflections are a big part of this movie too. Sometimes when I feel embarrassed or shame about myself, I can't stand to look myself in the mirror. I'll be brushing my teeth to the side of the mirror. I can just see my arm. Now this is gonna sound corny, but I really love that song Butter by BTS. I probably listened to it at least 900 times last year alone. And it's because it has that lyric where it's like, when I look in the mirror, I'll melt your heart into two. I understand it's probably referring in a relationship sense with someone else, but I don't know. I think we can melt our own heart into two as well. I wish Marta could have looked into those mirrors with that pretty smile that we saw in the beginning, knowing she's great the way she is. You gotta embrace yourself, silly. Most distressing moment was the ending, just pure sad ending. Now she can't attempt to run away. Life probably feels like a very sick joke to her. Overall, the film was good. I liked it. You can find it on YouTube. But otherwise, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed, click the like button and subscribe to see more messed up movies. Here are some movies similar to this one that you might want to find out about. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.